Alrighty, so here we go with the second part of the lesson. And so this part is about the z-score tables. So when we work with z-score tables, uh, you'll need the z-score tables that I gave you yesterday. And the z-score tables, so remember that the centered curve, all these numbers are the percents. So between uh, negative two standard deviations and negative one standard deviation, or a z-score of negative two and negative one, there is 13.59%. So the z-score table that I've given you is always going to give you the area to the left, all of this area to the left. So if this is the z-score, it'll give you the whole area to the left, always to the left of that z-score. That's what that table tells you. So uh, properties of z-scores, we should know these things. A z-score for a data value describes the number of standard deviations above or below the mean. A negative z-score indicates the data value is below the mean and it's shown on the left of the mean. A positive z-score indicates the data is above the mean, and it's shown to the right of the mean. Of the mean. And uh, the z-score table gives the area under the curve to the left of the z-score, or the percentage of data to the left of the z-score, or the probability the pro a randomly chosen data value is to the left of the z-score. The mean, the median, the mode have a z-score of zero. So zero is exactly halfway. So when we look at this one here, we're going to solve the problem. Z is, so we're going to determine the area under the curve for the standard normal distribution for each of the following z-score intervals. And then we're going to convert each of the areas to a percentage to the nearest 100. So this is the easiest kind of one. Z is less than negative 2.15. So here's the mean, that's 0. So negative 2.15 is going to be somewhere over here. And we're going less than that, so we're looking for this area here, which is exactly what the z-score tells us. So once we've done that, I want you to take your z-score table, and we're going to look for negative 2.15. So what we do when we, we take our pen, and we find negative 2.1. That's as far as we go for now. And so this is the row we're looking at. That row right there. And then we're looking for negative 2.15. So when we look up the top here, the second decimal place is 0.15. You just come down. Don't draw on your sheet because you want to read these numbers. This is the number. That is the area to the left of the z score. So we take this. The area to the left of the z score was, and I totally forgot it, so I hope it's saved. Uh, 0 0.0158. So, area of Z is 0 0.0158. Or, multiply that by 100, you get 1.58%. Either one. Now, this one, we're looking for the area greater than, Z is greater than negative 2.15, so two, negative 2.15 is still here. I mean, now we're looking for this area. And this is actually pretty easy as well, because we know the whole area under the curve, the whole area under the curve, so this area, this whole area is 1. So if I know this area over here, it should be easy. So the area of z in this case, z is greater than negative 2.15, it's going to be 1 minus 0 0.0158. Or, okay, 0.9842, which is 98.42%. That means for any z score of greater than, so to be 98.42% of the data values are going to be more than negative 2.15 z-score. Now let's erase what I did here. Because now we're looking for the area greater than negative 2.15 and less than positive 2.15. And so to do this area in here, this is what we want. We have to figure out two areas. So we know the area of Z is less than negative 2.15, which is 
0 0.0158. We've already looked that up. So now we need to figure out the area of Z is less than positive 2.15, which for that we go back to our tables. And so let's go to your table. And now I don't want uh, the positive one anymore. Right? Now I'm looking for positive 2.15. And the positive one is almost exactly the same. You just need to scroll. Uh, I'm looking for, instead of negative, it's positive 2.15. So here's 2.1 and 2.15. So trace it down, trace it over. 0.9842. So that means that 98.42% of the data is less than 2.15. So then for the area between the two of them, we just take these two numbers and we are going to subtract them. So the area of negative 2.15 less than z less than 2.15 is equal to 0 0.9842 minus 0 0.0158, which is going to be most of the data is going to be between those two. And 0.9684. That is the area. So those are the three examples that I could give you where you have to find the area to the left of a z-score, like in A, to the right of a z-score in B, or between two z-scores, like in C. Um, I don't think you need to see these. or Maybe I'll try one of these again, and then we'll uh, uh, leave this for another day. So for this one, P is e P, the probability that Z is between 1.83, which is going to be somewhere like here, and 2.65. Looking for this area. So what we need to do is we've got to find both of the areas. So we've got to find Z is, so the probability that Z is less than 1.83, the probability that Z is less than 2.65, and we always do less than because that's what our table tells us. So 1.83, go to your table, erase the lines that you do. Well, don't draw lines on it, period. I'll draw lines because it shows how I read it. You can do this with just your fingers, though. So it's 1.83, so here's 1.8, and then 3. Looking right here. 0.9664, and you can write that down. I'll just make a note of it. And I'll do the other one, which was 2.65. And for that, I'll have to scroll a little bit. Too far. 2.6 and 5. Oh, goodness me, that's not going to help. Oh, don't be like that. Oh boy, that's going to be hard to read. 2.6, 0 0.5. So I'm going to draw a line over. I'm figuring this out, going down, go straight down, don't go off an angle like me. 0 0.9960. Make a note of that. So for this one, then, I said this one was 0 0.9. 960 and 0 0.9664. So the probability then that Z or that we're between, I'm just taking this from above. You subtract the two of them. And you end up with a number here, 0 0.9960 minus 0 0.9664 of 0 0.0296. And that is your answer. And you might say, well, when is this useful? Well, it becomes useful. So these, this is a skill 
practice the skill. Uh, the assignment questions I put on here. I'm sure I did. Where are they? Oh, no. They're not on here? So I will post the assignment questions in a moment. And good luck. So this is the assignment. Uh, please, good luck with that and have a wonderful afternoon. We will work on this for a while tomorrow as well.